As a young boy, I did not advocate for myself at home or at school. At home, my older brother, who was two and a half years older than me, would roll right over me, dominating through threat of violence and or through sheer persistence. We lived in an apartment in New York City, and there was only one place to hang out, which was the formal living room. There, we had an Xbox, which is one of our most beloved possessions. If I was playing FIFA on it and my older brother arrived home and wanted to play, he would kick me off, even if I was in the middle of my game. The worst part was not that he did that, it was that I didn't speak up for myself, and I'd let him do that. At school, I would have my mother speak with my teachers whenever I had a question or an issue. I would refuse to speak up for myself, and so would rather have said nothing than speak with them, leaving my mother little choice but to be my mouthpiece. Then, in the end of sixth grade and the beginning of seventh grade, COVID was in full swing and things shifted at home. Being home all the time with my family allowed me to build my confidence as I was never pushed out of my comfort zone. At the same time, my brother was forced into being nicer to me. We had no outside friends to play with and no outside activities to go to. So if he wasn't nice to me, he found himself lonely and bored as I would refuse, as I would refuse to play with him. That newfound power made me stronger, but it wasn't until the beginning of eighth grade with regular life back in full swing that my confidence and power translated to advocating for myself. Within a 10 day period, I broke my collarbone and my beloved maternal grandfather passed away unexpectedly. These two events resulted in me missing a lot of school and normally I pride myself on my 100% attendance record. I miss tests, quizzes, lessons, papers, essays, you name it. I had no choice but to ask for what I needed from each of my teachers and my dean or else I risked failing the semester. My mother was so distressed by the loss of her father that I knew I had to figure out how to piece the, together the puzzle of catching up by myself. I rose to the occasion, advocated for myself, and was able to arrange meetings with my teachers and reschedule all of my missed assignments, etc. And I ended the semester with straight A pluses. Then, like every other skill, I had to practice it. At home, I decided I needed to get physically stronger in order to have the confidence to stand up to my older brother. I worked hard in the gym daily and began focusing on my nutrition. Now I am just as tall, if not taller, and much stronger than he is. I no longer allow myself to be pushed around. At school, if there is a test that I feel is graded or worded incorrectly, I'll bring it up to the teacher respectfully with a prepared argument ready. On my school's soccer team, when I wanted to be selected captain, I campaigned for myself to my coach. I did it through my actions as I always arrived early to practice and offered to help the coach carry equipment or set up the field as well as through my words when I came right out and told him that I wanted to be captain. I have learned the importance of advocating for myself and now I want to help others learn the same skill. So I've tried to break self-advocacy down into component parts. So what is self-advocacy, you may ask? Self-advocacy is the ability to speak up for yourself. It is the ability to identify what you need, communicate it clearly and help others to help you. Your voice is important and it is important and it is up to you to make sure it is heard. No one can advocate for you better than you. Being a self-advocate is always a good thing, provided it is done respectfully. You want to show respect for yourself by speaking up, but also respect for others as this is critical in building any relationship. So you might be wondering how you may advocate for yourself. The first step is to know your worth. Self-advocacy is about knowing what you're worth and making it known to others. To help you identify your worth, you can start with thinking about your strengths. To help this, you can write a list of at least three of your strengths and take stock of your contributions to your environment at home, school, sports team, etc. If you can't think of your strengths, you can ask your family and close friends to help you complete the list. The second step is to understand your weaknesses. Look at yourself through the lens of the other person and consider possible reasons why something you are doing might prevent you from getting or doing something you want. Write a list of at least three of your weaknesses. Then think about what you can do to address each one of those concerns and take action. The third step is to work on your confidence. If you are not confident in your abilities, others won't be either. To be a strong advocate for yourself, you have to believe that you can achieve your goals. So improving your self-confidence is key to building your self-advocacy skills. Keep your list of strengths at hand so you can review them. You may also want to come up with a saying that you repeat to yourself when you feel nervous or unsure. I started to say, you got this to myself, which I found very helpful. The fourth and final step is to build a solid reputation. Actions speak louder than words, so make decisions each and every day in a way that shows you are a good, trustworthy person. That way, when it comes, to self, when it comes time to self-advocate, 
you won't have much work to do because your efforts will speak for themselves. Ultimately, learning and practicing self-advocacy skills help people to better recognize and develop their strengths, communicate their needs, and boost their self-confidence. It is a skill all children should learn before going out into the world as it will serve them in every part of life.